e-bike wiring basics. So you might need to change the connector or hardwire something from a hard case battery cradle to your controller. Let's say you need to change your XT60 from male to female or you want to change out your XT90 from an XT90 anti-spark, that sort of thing. So these are all situations where you might want to use one of these connectors instead of doing soldering. Soldering can be used instead of any of this, but it's uh, kind of difficult to do if you're not used to it. So um, first off, you got something like a posi lock, posi seal, that sort of thing. Uh, you can see uh, an example of it on here. Um, this is, uh, it's, it's okay for uh, smaller wiring. For something like larger wiring, it's a little more difficult to work with, but it's, it's not bad. So if you unscrew this, you can kind of see inside of here that there's a contact. And once you stick the wiring in and you sort of spread it out, and then, then you tighten this back down, it pushes it down on that contact. And that is how that works. Um, you have a few different varieties. You have like the Posi Seal, Posi Tight. These actually only come in uh, the smaller wiring. They don't make it for the larger. Now you have uh, Wago connectors. These are a really interesting little connector. Very convenient to use for bench testing. You just pull these little uh, these little things up here stick the wiring in and you can see it in the little clear plastic window there and you push it down and it's just locked in place these do only work up to like 20 amps or well they could probably go higher but um, you might run risk of getting it hot or something like that it's a, it's only rated for 20 amps anyway so it would be great for bench testing for um, regular e-bike use where you might be pushing like uh, 25, 30 amps, something like that. It, it might work, but you know, it's problematic. I, I'm not sure that I would recommend it. Um, and then you have um, heat shrink butt splices. These are a, a great standby. These, um, these come in a variety of different sizes depending on the wire. So this is like a, 22 gauge that sort of thing you stick the wire in there and uh, you crimp it down with a uh, crimper and um, then you just uh, you put a lighter underneath it and heat it up and this whole this whole heat shrink uh, shrinks it down so it's nice and uh, watertight you also have step down heat shrink butt splices so these are these are color coded and uh, you can see on one side it's larger than on the other and same thing, you know, you put it in, use your crimper, and you hit it with a lighter, and it, it shrinks down. Very nice. And then you have solder sleeves, and these are a personal favorite of mine. Uh, they work really easily, and uh, you still have the same sort of variety of sizes, but um, all you need is a lighter for these, which is, you know, convenient. So um, for something like that, I'm, I'm just going to show you real quick how to use solder sleeves. So first off you want uh, you want a connector or some wiring something like that so you know you're gonna need uh, wire cutters something like that and you have your wiring that you need and hypothetically you don't need something like this like a like a wire stripper but it is kind of convenient so that's uh, that's how you use that you just sort of stick it in and it strips the wires for you really quickly and very conveniently. So um, we have some bare wires here and some bare wires here. We're going to pick out a solder sleeve here and we are just going to stick this in to the point where it is on the on the solder. Now how this works is this has low melt solder right in the middle, and on the sides you have um, you have a sort of like heat activated glue, and the rest is all heat shrink. And the heat shrink is some special heat shrink meant for um, you know meant to not burn unless uh, you really hold it on there quite a bit. So now we have this on here, and 
we want the matching one in there. Now we're gonna flare this out a little bit so that it sort of, so that it's sort of not all the way, but enough that once this wiring gets in here, it's sort of like mixed in with the wiring on the on the other on the other bit of wire. Now, you see the the solder is right right surrounding the wiring itself. So we're going to take the lighter and we're just going to we're going to feather it over top of here. And it might take a little time especially with something like a larger a larger bit of wiring, but um eventually that's going to that's going to heat up and you're going to see the solder melt and once it melts that's you know you're pretty much good to go at that point so you can see i mean the lighter's really quite close to this um and the heat shrink it's melting but it's not it's not really catching fire now if you hold it on there like directly on there and you are not uh, you're not feathering it then yeah it will it will catch fire eventually but you know just don't do that and you should be fine so um, at this point we are starting to see the solder melt and And I'll show you in a second what that looks like. Okay, so we are good to go. Now, if you look at this, you can see what this looks like. You see how the solder sort of spread out all across the wire? That's what you want. And you know this could even this could even get heated up a little longer if i if i'd backed the flame off a little bit and sort of feathered it around a little longer i mean realistically you could you could feather it underneath of there for you know a few minutes if you need for something like like a larger bit of wire like this like this is um, 10 gauge 12 gauge something like that you might need to do you know 5 minutes on just one wire just just sort of feathering it across but eventually this solder will melt and at that point you know this is already nice and cool and you're pretty much good to go so I'm just gonna show you real quick you know you're not gonna you're not gonna pull that apart or anything like that and the solder is still nicely melted there all right and that's all there is to it